Hello world and welcome. Today we will talk about autoencoders and LSTMs, how you can combine them to find outliners in a signal. So I also put you some code here. Um, for instance, if you want to have further readings, I'm Harris and let's get started. So to just recap everything and to make it more um, understandable here we find the signal this red signal here um, for instance it could be a signal from some sensor data where you can receive from machines and then you can find the let's say these are some kind of temperature the temperature is increasing and then you can find these outliners here rapidly increasing in the signal this is what outliners are basically they are not normal due to the normal signal distribution so um, to just check the code here, we start first of all. And if you like this channel, of course, subscribe, hit the um, like button, and I'm really happy about it to see you in the next um, tutorials. So in the first section here, I inserted all the libraries that are necessary for this outline detection. I downloaded the um, SMP 500 stock market course here from 88 to 2020. And I just plot it here. Um, I put the date in the index. So you have the closing function and uh, mean average due to time. I plot everything here. I was calculating the standard deviation, the mean and so on. The mean is the red signal here within um, the blue signal. It's a little bit smoother, uh, smoothed, as you can see here. The yellow or the orange dot line or dashed line here is the standard deviation, where you can see here, and then you can already see, let's say, how the signal is going further. I split the training set 80%, test set 20%, um, and afterwards I took the uh, standard uh, scalar here standard um, to just transform the signal within um, zero and one. It's better for the updating of the weight and calculating the weights. So I think this is really a nice uh, thing that you always have to do with within signal data. So the next thing I'm creating in the data set because I need this for the next function. Um, to um, uh, say that I want to look back at the uh, last uh, 30 days. So I'm looking back at the closing course minus 30 days to calculate the prediction for the next step. So uh, as I already mentioned above, uh, this is the model here, a sequential model. Start with LSTMs. 64 neurons and dropout rate 10%. So each 10% of the connections will be dropped due to um, not having overfitting. Um, in the middle, we have the repeat vector. Um, it will be repeated. And then another LSTM dropout and time distribution at the end, very end. I have the atom optimizer and the loss is the mean absolute error here because we are doing basically a regression here. So no accuracy, only a loss. So we have almost 50,000 parameters or let's say almost 50,000 um, weights that were updated. And I only inserted uh, to training the model 20 epochs. Shuffle false because it's a signal here. I don't want to ha sh have any shuffle. It's no classification, so I put shuffle on false. After training the model, you can see basically that the loss is um, pretty low. Here I plot the loss and the validation loss. The training loss is uh, the blue line here, and the validation uh, loss is the yellow or orange line here. It's going already up after 10 epochs, which shows us that this is the um, overfitting here. So you do need so much epochs here. I would recommend only 10, but I just want to show you in a, this example how you can do it. 
So I was calculating the loss between the prediction and the testing signal and uh, signal data here and plot the uh, loss distribution. And you can see the loss distribution here, it's just counting the number of the deviations or the loss due to um, the uh, train um, data. We have here the most um, times we have uh, 0.2 or 0.3 uh, loss. And if you are doing the same at the test um, data or and compare it, then you can really see um, that um, this is much more higher. So there's a deviation or loss between one and uh, two is the most um, significant one of the distribution, loss distribution. But now we are concentrating on the test um, data here. I want to tr I want to um, calculate the threshold here. I can say, okay, it's w bit between two and three, where um, after this uh, only outliners are coming. So if the loss is much more higher, it's a um, outliner basically. But I calculate it just basically with the standard deviation here, and it's 2.5. And I also plotted it here: the S&P 500 threshold 2.5 over loss. Um, so if you are printing this uh, anomalies that we're detecting here, you can see uh, in which date it was calculating and detecting. So we have. 186 um, anomalies here and if you are just plotting the 186 anomalies uh, which are red here or red dots um, you can see that basically up from 2018 there's a lot of rapidly increasing here and rapidly decreasing so there is something going on here and you can basically find the anomalies here you can also play around with the threshold to make it even more sensitive, but that's my recommendation. You can play around a little bit to find the best fit for your project. So thanks a lot and hopefully if you like this content, hit the subscribe button and see you soon.